this is my video review of the Fluence uh, XLBP uh, DW speakers. Um, by the way, Fluence's terminology is great with all their speakers. Um, XL is the series, BP is bipolar speaker, and then DW is dark walnut finish. Um, so yeah, so I got these speakers just a little bit ago. Um, here's my other one. And so I've had a bit of time to listen to them and I didn't see any reviews online which made it kind of hard to actually buy these because I just was essentially trusting the Amazon reviews that I saw um, and there wasn't there's only like promotional videos about it. there's no real here's what it's like here's what it is should you get it or not you know or under what circumstances should you get it so that's kind of the purpose of this video so real quick I'm going to show you my room just to show you the environment I've been listening in um, one second it's gonna be a kinda crappy pan but you'll get the picture. So here's my rear speakers, we'll start over here. There's the front, drum set, other speakers. So I'm gonna zoom H4 and I'm recording audio in the sky, so. Here up front we've got uh, Polk Monitor 70 Towers, um, a Mika XC center channel, and a BIC F12 subwoofer, and a cheaper Vizio TV. Um, this is a pretty budget setup, I'm a college student, don't have too much time or too much money, so, and that's also why everything's kind of crammed into this room. So, where do these speakers sit in Fluence's lineup? Well, we've got the, um, at the bottom end, we've got the AVBP um, surrounds, I mean, they have a ton of them. They've got the, uh, I think it's SXBP, um, kind of like an upper mid-range, and they've got these, the XLBP, and then above that, they have the Signature Series BP. They're all priced just a little bit off of each other, $50 increments going up. So originally I wanted to buy the AVBPs because they're only 120 bucks. didn't want to spend hardly anything. Um, and then I found that they, looking into it, and they don't have a crossover, the AVBPs. They only have like a little cap uh, capacitor on the tweeter. So that's kind of outrageous, and I'm not going <laughs> to stoop that low. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm into budget gear, but not stuff that doesn't even have proper crossovers. So... I wanted something that had a smooth response and could really throw sound all over the room. I had trouble with, I got some cheaper bookshelf speakers um, originally in the back and they were way too, the tweeters were way too directional. I mean, you can move your head six inches and you wouldn't really get, um, you wouldn't really get all the effects right. Um, so, so far, I mean, my initial thoughts are these speakers have done a great job of filling this room with sound. Um, this is a pretty small room. Um, actually, let me show you. So this room is about 14 feet wide um, this way and about 13 feet deep this way. All right, so here's my initial impressions of these speakers. They did a pretty good job of throwing sound all around the room. I tried a couple different configurations of them in here before I had... Um, before I'd um, gotten the mounting situated with the wall with getting screws in the studs and stuff. And so I put them on cardboard boxes, as you see here. Um, and with that, I was able to test the height and the placement. I, wanted, I was going back and forth between putting them on the rear or kind of in the side, you know, because you can put, and this is a 5.1 setup, you can put rears directly behind, like kind of where a back would go in a 7.1 setup, or you can put them on the sides. Um, and so I tried the back initially, and I discovered a couple curious um, things. So when they were on the back, um, which is not configured this way, we had one of these um, woofers firing um, this way at the wall, and of course, so it was bouncing. You know, it was bouncing at the same angle coming off, and so it kind of actually I could I could hear that um, it felt like they were filling the sides in a lot more. However, in this configuration, um, we've got one, we've got this, um, this side of the speaker firing right at the listener's ear, um, and we've got the other speaker firing off the back and coming off and kind of filling at the back. So there's two different kind of philosophies going on here, and I, I definitely prefer the first, which is having them placed not here but in the back and firing, you know, around the, firing around the sides. Um, but I already had all these pictures hung up and I didn't want to take them down because so I'd have to get take off that picture and that picture. So I didn't want to make a ton of holes in the drywall. I've already got plenty of things to clean up as you can see. 
Um, <laughs> so I wanted to be minimally invasive. So I wanted to show you guys real briefly how the mounting works on this speaker. It's very different from other bipolars in the same category from other manufacturers. I was looking into uh, clip surrounds and also the Polk uh, A4 surrounds, and both of them had the mounting bolts vertical, which is, of course, ingenious. I mean, that makes sense. So you can put two screws into one stud, you know, which are one and a half inches wide, technically, and bam. So you can just pop two screws right in the wall on a stud, you know, use a stud finder to find it, and hang your speaker up, no problem. Florence did a great job with everything in the front of the speaker, the crossover speakers, tweeters, the angles, it's all great. However, on the back, um, the back's a different story. <laughs> so as you can see here, they have these mounting brackets spaced at, well, I mean, you can see here, I mean, they're, it's about nine inches for the outside and about six inches for the inside. So, and a stud, studs are spaced about 15 to 16 inches apart. So as you can see, you can't mount it on two studs. That's a bit of a problem. So what I ended up doing was I went to Lowe's and I grabbed um, some drywall anchors. And we, we already had drywall anchors, but they were really skinny. Um, they were like the width of a screw, which is way too small. I mean, this is 11 and a half pound speaker. It's pretty hefty. Um, it's not, not lightweight at all. So what I ended up doing was I ended up putting one screw here in this guy, in this hole and it's just a two inch wood screw like for exterior use. I ended up putting a drywall anchor into the wall at this spot um, and you can see this on the wall itself up here. So you can see here on the wall I've, um, I've got the wood screw on the left and the stud um, and then I've got the drywall anchor on the right. It's just a little white guy with a Phillips head insert and you just push into the wall with a screwdriver, screw it in and then it pops in the back and it kind of locks it in and then you can screw the little screw into it that you're actually going to hang the speaker from. So that ended up working out really well, but I had another problem. My other problem was that these holes are, sorry, slightly smaller than the, um, the diameter of the head of an exterior screw, which means I couldn't stick an exterior screw in here, wouldn't fit. <laughs> um, I had, but I could get it in. I had to stick it in at an angle and so that makes mounting kind of tricky, but technically I, I can still do it. It's just it's just like, what the heck? Little face palm. Um, probably the biggest oversight with these speakers in the rear is the banana plugs. So like, here's a typical banana plug, and if I stuck one in, in the top, of course I can't stick it all the way in because I already have wire in here, but if I stick it in the top, you can see it sticks out about, it's about half an inch. So, which means you can't mount on the wall if you have it like that, of course. This isn't too big of an issue. You can stick speaker wire straight in. I mean, usually you really only use these guys um, if you have to unplug and replug things and re reconfigure all the time. So, I mean, they're essential on the back of a receiver because all the ports are so close to each other or all the outputs are so close to each other. But, I mean, here you're going to wire it one time and hang it up and it'll probably be there for, I don't know, five years. So, really not too big of a deal. So that covers the back. Now we're going to move on to testing. What movies did I test, and what do I think about them? All right, so here I'm going to give you a demonstration from Unbroken, Unbroken, which is, um, this is really just the first couple minutes of the movie. There's like a bomber uh, fight scene kind of thing with flak blowing up in all directions and stuff, and kind of just chaos, but you're in the air, you're in, um, the characters are in a plane, you know, and so there's stuff happening all around them in, in every angle, so that's amazing with Atmos. I actually got to see this in the theater, in an Atmos theater and it was spectacular. Um, but it still sounds really good in a 5.1 system if you have the right kind of speakers. So, I mean with these speakers I thought they did a fantastic job of um, just throwing the flak sounds all over the room. Um, and so I'm going to play a little portion of that. What I'm doing here is I'm going to turn all the front down a lot. I think like negative 12 is the farthest I can go. And so most of just the rear speakers are going to be playing. So I'm going to reorient uh, this H4N um, so that he can just be picking up these guys in stereo, just their area. And so you'll get an idea of what these guys can do. So, here we go. Uh-oh. Zero, inbound, 10 o'clock level. All right. Here they come, boys. Call them out.
right, so I know that was not very scientific at all. Um, I just, I was just trying to do something to kind of show you what they're like. But I mean, specifically there, I could hear that Mustang. That I think it, no, sorry, the Zero. It's Japanese whizzing by this way. You can hear it go from the speaker, and then kind of travel across to the rear right speaker. Um, and then there's another one that goes by, and it's like, <laughs> you know, so it's great. And people said online these speakers have a very good. Um, range, they've got a lot of bass, um, and so that's, some people say, well, you can use them for main speakers. So, I mean, that's great for surrounds, because surrounds do have bass information in there. Whatever, I know you're, I know most of it's supposed to go to the subwoofer, but right down to like 100 hertz, you know, or down to 80 hertz is fair game for these guys, and they can do it. Um, the only thing I don't like about their frequency response, um, I mean, actually, I'm, I'm an audiophile and I'm, an, and I'm a bit of an audio engineer. I've got a home recording studio. I have these Yamaha HS8s um, in there, which are fantastic. Best speaker I've ever heard under $1,000. I've auditioned um, almost 10 pairs of monitors, and I like them the best. They're so flat. They tell the truth. They don't lie. So I'm used to hearing um, very flat audio. So I got a chance to listen to some music on these guys before I hooked them up. Um, and they did a pretty good job. There was plenty of bass. The tweeter's very smooth. I did hear um, there's a bit of a dip in the upper mid-range, which was kind of unexpected. Um, these Polk Towers, that's what I like the most about them, is they have a very smooth high uh, upper mid, mid, and low kind of transition. Um, so I'm not, I'm not hating on the crossover or anything. It does have a great crossover, but it sounds like it's a little bit missing them somewhere in the mid-range, maybe upper. Um, but I mean, there's still plenty for surround activity. If you're doing using these guys as rears, they're gonna kick your butt. I mean, they're great. I mean, in, in Inception, for example, in that scene where um, Ellen Page, forgot her character's name, is first doing shared dreaming with Leonardo. They're sitting in a French cafe outside, you know, and all the little boxes start blowing up, and you could hear stuff going on all over around um, around you. All around you. Um, and so, I mean, that, that was really great. And I know. In, other movies use them a lot for more like reverb and atmosphere. Um, and so I also tried the episode, Star Wars Episode 2 scene where they're, um, that's like the asteroid chase where the slave one is um, chasing after Obi Wan's Jedi Starfighter. Um, and so it was lots of great stuff with like little meteors blowing up and lasers flying all over the place. And so, with all the movies I've tested, I've been totally satisfied with these wasn't too sure because 200 bucks new was still quite a bit. So to summarize, I love these speakers. They do a great job of filling in the room. That's just what I needed because monopoles were way too directional for a room 14 by 13. I feel that if you crank these up a little more and had them in a living room or something that was larger or a theater room, they could really just, you know, pound it out. I'm in a small room and so I have them a little quiet. So, I mean, I'd say these would work well in small rooms and, and in large rooms. Um, and in super large rooms, you'd probably have the 7.1 system anyway, so I think they're, they can really handle just about anything you can uh, throw at them. Trust those reviewers on Amazon, they're right, and go ahead and buy them unless you got a pile of cash laying around. Because then there's plenty of other, I mean, you might as well just buy the SVS Bipolar. All of the SVS stuff is great. So, yep, yeah. signing off.